Greetings, this is Jeff Scott, and welcome to this week's edition of the Top Down Review. It is August 20th, 2017, and I've entitled it, A Question, A Bear Awakens. This is for educational purposes. Only anything I say is in the spirit of education and should not be considered investment advice. I am a doctor, not a broker. I am not licensed. I am not affiliated with any software vendor or technology company. Anything I say is based upon my own opinion. I've paid for all the programs I use, and trading involves risk, and you and you alone are solely responsible for any decision you make. I call my, my trading the be-your-own-guru style of trading, which means I've learned from many. I've learned from many of the people on this, Ian Woodward and Ron Brown, who took Canceling from O'Neill, Morales and Catcher, who also improved upon it, uh, John Person, who really taught me how to trade. He's got some great tools, great techniques, great indicators, and really a great mindset and has become a good friend. Uh, Van Tharp, Position Size of Money Management. Um, my buddy, George Lee from Western Canada. And then Guy Cohen, who a lot of people ask me, you know, where do I start? Something even easier. Are there websites that can help me do it for me? And I think Guy's got some great stuff and I learned from him as well. What I need in my desert aisle besides high speed internet, internet uh, high speed internet, you'll see TradeStation or Thinkorswim always active on my computers. Genesis, if I'm doing futures, HGSI and EdTrader are my, my go-to for an analytics. I do follow seasonality in a number of websites. Um, just to remind folks, John Person has a live meeting Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, November 30th through December 2nd. Um, I have a one-day meeting following John's. It'll be in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Um, here's his phone number and website. Um, there's my email address if you have interest in mine. And I did discuss it with Mary earlier today. There is some um, discount will be available. Still, I know it looked like it had expired. I'm continuing on my one day meeting. Oh, wrong way. Oh, my meeting didn't come across. Bummer. All right, so let me see if I can show you about my one-day meeting, and I'd really love to have folks attend that as well. Um, I have room for a couple more people, not many. So if you're interested, you probably need to let me know. So one-day meeting will be Sunday, December 3rd. I'll teach about what I do that's given me a very good return this year. And more importantly, I have a life. I'm not tied to my computer during the day. It requires less than an hour each night. And I work full-time building companies, so I do this while having a job. Here are some of the topics. What I learned from Ian, that'll be a big part because one of the things I like to keep alive, and Ron Brown as well does it, is, is the things that we learn from Ian. Finding my A trade, which are the trades I like to take, how I manage the trade, my favorite option plays, setting up my scans and putting it all together. From a housekeeping perspective, It'll be at a Palm Beach Garden Hilton. It'll be $400 if you're attending John's meeting, 500 if not, 12 attendees. Um, I have blowout dinner Saturday night, then breakfast and lunch during the program on Sunday. Um, as weather allows, we'll consider doing a boat trip on Monday, maybe a fishing trip. Um, those who've been here before know that I, um, I, I like to go out on the boat, but I actually have my own boat now, so no more little boat club boats. Um, one of the things I was able to do this year with some of my winnings Everybody gets MP4 videos of the presentations, as well as my slides um, in PDF format. As of right now, I do not offer a video, a, a, a um, videos and slides only option. Um, I think at $400, if that's all you want, you can still register. And even if you're unable to attend the meeting, I will um, provide these to you. Email hgsidoc at gmail.com. What do I need on my desert aisle besides high-speed internet? We've already talked about this slide. Here is um, HGSI, the website, highgrowstock.com. Two things to know. This red line here, free 30-day trial. It's free, no credit card asked for. And down here under investing strategies um, are some videos that I put together as well as Ron Brown and others. As I always offer, if you are a new HGSI user and you'd like some um, some videos that are now getting dated that will go over the vernacular as well as um, what the buttons mean. If you reach me at hgsidoc at gmail.com, I'll be happy to share those with you. Stock patterns are cyclical. Here's where we were on the election day when we bottomed before the market opened the next day, and we've been in a huge uptrend since. 
Are we in the sell zone today? Do we have to change our behavior? I wish I could tell you I don't know that for sure. Clearly, we are correcting. Now, we may just be in a Darvis box where we took the, just the top here and we're up and down. That's how it's been for the last several months. Um, what that means is you can't play the market the same down here as you do up here. And to me, it's raising cash, smaller position, selling premium, and frankly, putting collars around some of my positions that remain. I like to get a sense of what the market did by looking every day, during the day, after the day, at some of the major sectors. And what I see here is energy has got a lot of green. So strength in energy. Regional banks look a little stronger than regular banks. That's interesting, um, especially with the rates that we're going to show you. Um, consumers were weak. If I look at discretionary and staple, here's discretionary, here's staples. Uh, healthcare weak, although biotech had a little bit of strength. And utilities were the big winners, which can never be good from the market itself. Major markets tell the story. And what you can see in the major markets, and let me just drop into my thinkorswim. There's a cool button. I'm sure everybody knows about it. I was probably the last to find out. But all I got to do here is click here. Go down to maximize cell. And very quickly, this is the E-minis on a daily and notice it broke down below yellow, which is the 50-day moving average. It's sort of a doji here. If it was flipped up top, I'd say it was a spinning top, so maybe it's a, a dreidel bottom or something like that. I made that up. I'm fairly strong volume. Um, is this going to be a, a place to reverse? I hope so. We'll talk more about that when we get into HGSI. Um, here's the NASDAQ, a doji sitting right below the 50. And interestingly, how it's pulled back to the same level on both of these pullbacks. Um, obviously, not a roaring bull-looking market. Looks like it's topping. Do we have another uh, bounce in front of us? On the, um, the YM, the Dow, the strongest of the bunch, closing above the 50-day moving average. On the Russell, using the IWM, the weakest has closed below the 200-day moving average. But again... Closed higher on the, the end than it opened on Friday with a green candle, although it looks like it was probably down a penny. Um, is that a potential reversal signal or setting up a reversal? It's not a reversal signal yet. None of these are, but potentially could be showing at least a short term. And it's interesting here, using volume spread analysis, stopping volume at lows indicate downtrend and likely. So maybe we see a pop this week. The VIX, well, this has been strong, and I thought it was coming back down. I took my profits on my um, volatility position, and then it ran right back up. Now, when I show you a weekly, you'll see that this is pretty um, high. But if I go on a weekly chart, it's really low compared to where it's gotten when the market has been in trouble. So, yes, the VIX is up there, but um, it's not at levels that are... Um, outstanding and the dollar looks like it's bounced off the 92.55 and is back up here but it's still clearly weak sitting on top of the descending 17 notice how all the moving averages had rolled over so back to my powerpoint if i take a step back and look at the weeklies the point i want to make here is this this green here which you can't really see real well let me go into this mode uh, there you go this green is a 17 weekly, and you can see we're above that, uh, above the 50 weekly here on the, the Russell and the VIX low compared to its past, although it's elevated in the dollar week. So if I wanted to believe that this wasn't over, I would look at these and say we're still in a longer term uptrend. In fact, if I go to my Genesis for just one slide, this is a daily on top, weekly in the middle, monthly on the bottom. We start with the e minis the NQs, the TFs, the NYSE, and the IWM. Just look at the bottom. All the, week, all the monthlies are in an uptrend. The weeklies are starting to show evidence of deterioration, and the dailies are in a chop. So we are clearly in a bad period of the market. But is this a, a pullback in an uptrend, or is this the beginning of the end? Rates continue to weaken. 10-year on the left, 30-year on the right, S&P on the top, and I put in areas that I thought were critical on both of these, and we failed at them and has led to weakness in the market. And um, as you can see on the bottom, rates 
help to determine some of the strength of some of the underlying AD lines. On the left will be the, in white, will be the AD line on the small stocks. On the right, the large stocks, the S&P 500's overlaid. I look for divergences here. There's basically rollover in everything, no divergence. Breath did narrow. Stocks above the 200, stocks above the 40-day moving average pulled back. And more important to me, when I look at the three-month new high-low, which is one of the things that I look at to find a reversal, I see a little hook here suggesting maybe this is going to reverse. When this reverses to the upside is when the market typically re recovers. And if you look around here, we are at the level that we typically reverse. If I want to be a naysayer, which I may want to be, you can see it can get even lower. Look at the weekly McClellan. Uh, small sell-off in the market. Obviously, it's still in a major uptrend. This is the S&P. And you could see we did hit a recent low on the oscillator, um, but not as low as we were back here a few months ago um, or many months ago. I'd say it's a weekly chart. Lower highs, higher lows on the summation index. Um, certainly not at an extreme. Current buckets. You could see that 80 stocks in the S&P 1500 are below the midline of their Bollinger Bands. That tells you how weak the market is. You can also see that 13% of stocks are below the lower Bollinger Band. Um, now, I'm out of curiosity, where was it earlier in the week? So one thing, I'm gonna open up that report. Let's see if I saved it. Uh, yeah, this one isn't what I want. All right, I'll maybe take a look later, maybe not. I look at this every night, and I know that when I start to get 30 or 40 stocks below the lower band of the Bollinger in the S&P 1500, that the market's going to reverse. So we are at a point where we are oversold by the buckets, but maybe not to an extreme. I can't remember what it was on Thursday. It's not really a Hindi free zone, but it's mostly a Hindi free zone, so I should probably call it a Hindi hunting because we did have a positive, one of them was positive, What does the Hindi tell me? The Hindi is what I expect to see at a market top when the professionals are selling to the June, to the amateurs like us, and it often precedes a market fall. We did have one fire on the NYC on Wednesday. I look for multiple occurring at the same time, so we'll be hunting for additional. Market tone, decided we look at this column here, the Woody indicator, right across the board as it is on the sectors. And... Um, <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, I forgot to change this one. Sector strength deteriorates, showing weakness across the market. Um, it's been a couple tough weeks. You can see it here. Canaries in the coal mine have broken below the 17. These are the big stocks in the market, but they have not yet broken below their 50-day moving average. The index, which I put together back in June of the leaders on June 27th, has pulled again back to the 50-day moving average, has also not broke it as of yet. It's still in an uptrend. The fact that my canaries and my index are still holding above the 50 could be a sign that the market is not done yet, but I will be watching this very closely. It, it's always important to know your news and your earnings dates. Sorry for the noise around here. My family just came in. Um, here is the news on the left. comes out of Bloomberg. And you can see it's a relatively light week. This is a lot of notes, announcements. Um, you got jobless claims on Thursday. Um, you've got a little bit of Fred talk, including Janet Yellen on Friday. But all in all, I thought it was a relatively light week. On the earnings front, we're getting near this earnings, and boy, this has been painful. Um, I think of Amazon falling, that was a while ago, but think of things like AAOI and others. It's been a very challenging earnings season. Um, as I say down here, it's a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It's bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. So, for example, I've got BZUN. I've had BZUN for a while. It has held up well. Um, I am nervous about it. I had an option of taking profits, um, but um, I decided to, to actually buy some puts on it.
because the puts were relatively cheap. By owning puts, I've locked my price if the thing sells off hard. And if it takes off, then I have the ability to cover my puts um, or to, 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 to sell them back, um, lose a little bit of money on the puts, just as you would on an insurance policy, but not have to worry about sleeping tonight um, before these earnings come out tomorrow. All right, that's the uh, presentation. And now let's get back into look at some charts. So if you've been here before, you know I like to start with um, TradeStation. And I have sort of my five or six points. I think I added one, so we'll call it six-point rule of what a market is doing. I look, here is the E-minis. First thing is, is it in a person buy or sell? And is it daily, weekly, and monthly? As you can see, we are in a long-term uptrend on the E-minis. That's a pretty beautiful uptrend. Um, we are in a downtrend on the daily and the weeklies, according to John's PPS indicator. The second thing I look at is the color of the paint bar. This is something I get from Alexander Elder. When it's red, it tells me the market is okay to be shorting or holding, but I should not be going long. When it's green, it's okay to go long or to hold. But when it, And when it's blue, I have whatever decision I want to make. We have sell signals on John, and we also have red bars on the daily and weekly on the Alexander and the Elder indicator with a blue bar down here on the E-minis. The third thing I look at is where am I at within my envelope? Because I know that these indices, when they drop outside the envelope, they don't stay there for long. They typically bounce back in. And as I could see here, we are below the envelope. So that tells me that perhaps a bounce might be coming. I look down here and I look at the high jump and know when it's above 90 or 95, it's telling me that the market is um, overbought and it's going to um, fall. When it's below 20, I get the oversold signal. And lastly, I look at my bongo indicator, which is red for the daily and the weekly, and that's consistent with a market that sold off and is in sell mode. So E-mini looks weak. We've got some evidence with below the envelope, the low high jump, um, that maybe we're getting to a point where we might have a bounce. And again, keep in mind, we're in a longer term uptrend. I look at the NASDAQ futures. I see red arrow, red arrow, new one on the weekly. Red bar, but a blue bar, not bad. Still within the auto envelope, 33, and weekly bongo just went red. NASDAQ futures also look weak. Um, you know, they could change in a day, but um, they look like they're still in sell mode. If I pull up the Russell futures, um, this has been, you can see what happened here, had a sell signal come in, remains in a sell signal, now below the, the envelope. Their high jump is at 2.34. What does that mean? That means the extension below the 1750 and 200 day moving averages is lower than 97% of prior days in the last year, which means it's about as oversold as it's gotten. So yes, we are in a sell signal in daily, weekly, and monthly. Yes, we got red, red, and blue. It looks horrible, looks weak, it is weak. It's below the auto envelope. It's very extended to the downside. This, again, we might be looking for a bounce early in the week. It's probably a retracement and a downtrend and not indicative of a new bull run. Again, the bongos are red. The one thing I didn't mention to you is I also look for these red and green dots, red dots on top, green dots will be on the bottom, and they give you evidence of potentially some um, divergence that might suggest a market change is coming. Fourth one I might look at would be the YM, which is the Dow. And the Dow's been the strongest, and you could see it too went into a sell signal on Thursday. Um, red, still in a buy in the weekly and the monthly. These red dots showed some divergences and suggested that the Dow was going to take a breather, which it did. I can look at the dollar the same way. Now the dollar has a new buy signal coming in on Tuesday. It's low on its high jump, again, showing how much the dollar's beaten up. It's in a sell signal on the weekly and a sell signal on the monthly. 
Um, if the dollar is strong, then gold should be strong. And if I just look at gold, for example, you can see that gold is up near the top of its range. It's in a buy daily, weekly, and monthly. That's pretty big. Um, it's been range bound, frankly. Um, if I look at the weekly chart, and let's put some. I've got some things that. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it here. Uh, drawing. Let's put in a horizontal line. We've got support down there. I got resistance there. So you're sort of range bound there. So I look at this and I see, gosh, if it can break above that line, that would be pretty cool but it's probably going to come back down. I have a shooting star perhaps here at the upper edge, and I'm at 96% on the high jump. Um, very bullish, too bullish. I think gold is due a breather. Um, and if I take a look at the VIX, we'll see that the VIX, um, notice the weekly bongo has gone green on the VIX, and the VIX has moved up quite a bit. It's in a buy signal on the first two time frames, still on a sell on the weekly, but as I pointed out before, it's not nearly as high as it's gotten before. All right. Now, in case I forget to come back, the true strength of TradeStation are two things, just for those that don't know. One thing is that intraday, my indicators are giving me buy and sell signals. And I can look for new high closed dojis or low closed dojis, which flash on the day they fire. I can look at Weekly, daily, even monthly going on at the same time. I could look at the relationship between price and support and resistance. If you use some of my other indicators, um, let me just find the window that has those. I have things like um, mobile breakout squeezes, pocket pivots, Bible gap ups. So the nice thing about TradeStation is you can actually get your indicators in a, in a, you know, shooting up numbers or colors as they fire during the day, which to me is great. The other thing that's nice is, um, uh, I'm looking for a screener 2.0. Here it is. The scanner function in TradeStation. And one of the things that I do is um, I run certain scans on, on a nightly basis looking at, perhaps new buy signals. So one I was interested in was in BVN, which is in the gold and silver space. So I might be a little nervous about gold and silver based upon what I told you, but I'm looking for evidence of new singles firing in. And all this is going to show me is each one of these stocks should have a new signal. Um, if you're on a lot of the investors.com board, you know about control. And you can see it also had a signal in on the green arrow, the person signal on Friday. You'll learn all about this at my Friday meeting. Or excuse me, it's a Sunday meeting. So the scanner is a great thing in TradeStation. And Thinkorswim, um, MarketWatch is not the same as um, Radar Screen. And although you can add certain things, so let me just do that real quickly. So what I did is I added some of my favorite indicators here. I could have week to date. So I have a chance to see how things have performed during the week. These were once my holdings. Um, kahunas, if they follow, high close, low close dojis, pocket pivots, viable gap ups. This is a proprietary indicator that's showing me institutional movement in or out of a stock. That's a good thing. This is not up to date. Um, I can scan as well for some of the same things. PPF spy symbol with buy, positive MACD divergence looking at price and volume. So there's a lot of things that I like, and um, it's interesting, a couple of these were stocks that actually made it to my buy list or during the week. So I use both of them differently. The scanner for Thinkorswim during the day, the scanner for TradeStation after hours, radar screen during the day for TradeStation. So now I've got my ideas of what the market's going to do. Let's look at them in HGSI. I've said several times that perhaps we'll see a bounce this week. And in fact, um, 
and I cut off my presentation one slide too soon. So let me just go back to that and actually address one of the comments on, the, on my slide. First, I said the volatility increased as markets sold off. I showed you the VIX. I showed you the midweek Hindi and the NYSE. One doesn't do it for me. I need to see a pack of them, but it makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Breath decreasing, but getting close to oversold. I talked about how my two artificial indexes are holding up well. We are getting in the end of August into September. Do we have a rally into Labor Day and then a sell-off? But September is the weakest part of the year. Um, interesting, I've got a number of long-term things I do, and they're not screaming bear. They're just, think, you know, they're showing weakness with a correction, um, but not yet ready to say this bull is over or that we've gone into a tough bear market. Um, every day we await the news item that rocks the market from North Korea to Trump and worldwide terrorism, yet perhaps we get a bounce this week unless, no pun intended, we're trumped by the news. In HGSI, I like to start with a Woodward and Brown user groups, Major Markets Plus. And what I'll do is I'll bring them over here in a warehouse view, and I'm going to rank them by the top down view. And this gives weight to price and volume near term more than said anything else. And I see that utilities and bonds and energy and commodities were leading. That's never good for your stock portfolio. I see on the bottom the small caps, 600 mid caps. Um, the larger caps up a little bit higher, but the market, um, the money was not moving in to um, common stocks. That's pretty certain. Here's the S&P. Let's go into a cleaner view. So on this view, these two are the bongos. The top one is the weekly. Below that is the daily. I have two ways of measuring the Hindenburg and HGSI, um, and this will only be, will be the same on every chart, and it's looking at the NYSE. Notice we didn't fire one, so it's not always agreement, um, especially when they're um, close. And if I update, I have to go update my list and make sure that I still have only fresh stocks that are currently traded in the NYSE. Um, as we talked about, it, this is a 17 green, 50 blue, 200 red. And you can see the 17 and the 8 day and the exponential have turned down. Prices crossed below the 200. We had a kahuna to the downside on Thursday, which is a, a big move to the downside. I see this. It's, at minimum, it was a stalling day. Um, we saw doji here, and we reversed. Um, seeing a doji after a downtrend often leads to an indecision or potential reversal, and we'll be looking for that this week. This is a weak market, so although I have a feeling that we could see a bounce, I also have a feeling that we could see a ride down to the 200 and then bounce and go back up. So do we do that or do we go up from here? This is probably more likely, but what I hope we don't do is this, which is trade up to the 50 and then drop down which would be decidedly bearish. So those are the options we could do. We take off from here, we pull back to the 200 from here, or we fail on an up move, become very shortable, and then move back down to the 200. No one says you stop at the 200, just look at the, the Russell. So that to me is the S&P, indecision. I like the doji, we'll see if we can't get a pop. Dow Jones Industrial Average, the 30 stocks we spend a lot of time talking about pulling back to the 50-day moving average. So do we bounce from here or do we slice right through or more likely do something like this? So really remains to be seen which way we're going to go. 50-50 um, shot, I'll be watching and see what happens. The NASDAQ, also sitting below the 50, um, closing where it's closed or open four times in the last six or seven days with a doji indecision day. And again, do we do this? Do we do up to the 50? And then I fail down to that 200. Or do I start my track to the 200 now? I think 
those are the three scenarios that I'm looking for. And as Ian taught us, having a three road scenario is a good idea. So I'm very prepared to act based upon what it actually, what move it actually takes. The Russell 2000, the weakest of the bunch, slicing through the 200 day moving average here. Now it's undercut its prior lows, in fact. You have a little ways to go if you want to go all the way back to March. But it has undercut the more recent lows. Um, has a doji. And again, do we go back up? Do we go here and fail? Or do we just continue to fail from here? No one knows. I don't know. We'll see what the futures say in a couple hours. But I think we're at a point in the market where there is clear risk here, more risk than we've seen. If I go look at the dollar, we should see what happens when a market cuts through its indexes or its, ind its, its moving averages. And these averages that were once resistance, now or once support rather, now become resistance. So here's the dollar running up into its moving averages. Is it changed? Is it going back up? Maybe. But it's going to have to now get through the 50 and the 200-day moving average. The weekly bongo is still red. The dollar's weak. Pretty, pretty easy to see that. And then the VIX. You can see the spike closed down from the top on Friday. Is the VIX heading down? Um, it's interesting. If I put a weekly chart on this, this VIX is not a very impressive VIX. And I don't know if it reflects decreased volatility across the market, if it's some other changes, but we did get a run up, and typically these run ups are spikes. We'll see if the spike is over. Go back to the daily. And as I mentioned um, on the trade station charts, I expect to see some weakness in gold and silver. But they were strong with the falling dollar. But you can see a reversal, a bearish engulfing day on Thursday on gold miners. If I look at um, the ETF for gold and silver, look a little stronger. But a you know, reversal day traded up, red candle high, and then traded down. That's a bearish candle for, in my mind. And if I find silver here, struggling to make the 200-day moving average. So... In my mind, the market's been weak, is weak. I do see some things that suggest we could be seeing a bounce, but I got to wait till the bounce happens. We could also go down further. As I said, three um, scenarios. One, we move back here and we move up to new highs. I think that's unlikely. Number two, we move back up and we start to run into problems with overhead resistance at some of these moving averages that we just sliced. I think that's a risk. And I can't cut out the fact that the market just plummets from here and moves down to the next moving average. I hope not. But that's my three-road scenario. And my portfolio is protected, assuming that that might and can happen. Now, I like to go to industry groups. And you can see I've got 176 groups and get an idea of how many are moving up and down. On Thursday, I think there were one or two groups that were moving up. It expanded to 21. When I look at the groups moving down, you can see it's only one on Friday, which I thought was a shocker. Uh, if I look at a five-day window, I've got 73 groups downside. And if I look at a five-day up, I've only got 13. So you can see over the intermediate term, the market has been weak. I usually concentrate on the long side, on the ones that are moving up. And if I look at this, power generation, oil, gas, integrated oil, steel, a lot of things here that are not traditional growth. Tobacco here. Um, let's just see what we, I mean, I know there are a couple in power generation that I like. Now, Calpine is allegedly a buyout story. I don't usually chase after these. Um, it was sitting on the 200, big volume in a kahuna on Friday. And let me go to my full view. Dynagy, 
Now I like this pattern. Here's a stock that's been beaten down, going sideways. It's above its moving averages. You can see here the group strength is strong. On Thursday, it had a mobile breakup from a squeeze. Friday at Kahuna, volume is trending up and a big up day on Friday. I think Dynagy looks interesting here. So I only usually go up to the index. These were the top two. I wouldn't chase one, and I would consider looking at Dynagy. Oil, gas, equipment. We saw that oil was firming. These neighbors, oil services stocks, these have been beaten down. Is it a two-day wonder or something different going to happen? I don't go chasing down here. Get me above the 50. I might be interested. But right now, I see a stock that's in a long-term downtrend. Schlumberger, awful. Imagine all the people here that are saying, if it can just get back here, I'm going to sell. So it's going to have some overhead resistance. That said, this is one of the big kahunas in the group. It did have a pocket pivot on Friday. Um, and a green candle low, which is bullish, and it has earnings per share growth coming in. Schlumberger would be interesting if I was believing. Superior Energy Services, the same looking pattern. Um, the other big kahuna in the group is Halliburton, and you can see Halliburton, the same thing. This gray bar here is called a bingo and the bingo is the baby out with the bathwater sign. It usually occurs after a deep pullback of the market. You can start to see rallies from there. But right now, it's too early to say there's a rally. So this group made it to the top because it's got a green bar on Friday and big volume. But boy, it's hard to look at those and say, I got to buy every one. Integrated oils. There's actually one here I like. And um, it's actually on the bottom. Let's look at a couple of these because the one on the bottom, maybe I should look at the ones at the top. Petrobras, sort of a psycho political story with what goes on in Brazil, but huge reserves and lots of debt. Um, you can see why it made the list. It had a PSA reversal and a kahuna and a mobile breakout from a squeeze. We just drop a weekly in this, and you can see that this is a stock that's had a pretty, um, well, sideways time at best. And you can see how high the 200-day moving average is here. So it's come down a lot over the last several months. Here's another Petrobras. Looks about the same. And again, you, you're talking about a market that's painful, and you have things that are all beaten up, and they have one big green candle, and they make it to my list. The one that I thought was potentially viable is a Colombian oil producer, now, how is this any different? You're right, maybe it's not different. The weekly bond go up here is green. It had a kahuna. Um, it pays a 1.7% dividend. It's got great earnings per share growth. But again, all these are bottom fishers. These are stocks that have been beaten up and are starting to show some life. And whether it's real or won't, is not, we'll have to see. On the steel raw materials, Valet and Cliff have been moving of late, and you could see Valet had pulled back, bottomed in June, has had a nice move up from about 8 to, to 10. That's a pretty good return, makes money, low PE, pays a dividend. Cliff's natural resources, not as good. It failed at the 200, sitting right now above the 50. I would say that Valley looks more impressive to me, and the one that I've been nibbling on again is Techninko. Um, which I put in the same group um, in my mind, and you could see very similar to Valet. It's had a nice move up since the mid-June lows. Internet Media, finally a high-growth group. Weibo is one that I own. Unfortunately, when it was a lot cheaper, I had sold some several months out, 95 calls against it, and... Um, I wish I would have covered them. They're September calls, so I may see how it goes because this has just been a great stock. I've been in it for a while. The time to have got into the stock, was this was when I got my first signals. You can see the um, Kahuna, the pocket pivots, the PSER reversal, and it's had a big run from you know, 52, 54, all the way up now to about 90. Still looks very good. In fact, let me clean, go to something that's cleaner cup handle breakout um, I think this one goes higher and I think I'm going to have to figure out what to do with my short calls 
because um, I'm not sure I want to get mine called away. Then again, the reason why I sold them in September was I figured that September was going to be a tough market and um, just a little bit of a cushion there. Why, why? Sold off a little bit, similar chart, uh, but not that much. Has to get above the 17. Don't know anything about Ren or Ren. Uh, internet communications doesn't have any earnings, small revenue, but growing positive. Love the pattern though. Let's look at it on a weekly. So it's IPO, it's been in a downtrend forever, it just broke above the 50. Um, and what really stood out to me was weekly bongo, big move here, and a kahuna, buy at your own risk. I don't know anything about that. I like the pattern. Twitter, not for me. All right, so Weibo looks good here. YY looks interesting as well. Consumer Electronics, uh, this is a stock that's been all over the board. I showed just got a PPS buy signal. This is Control 4 Corporation. Uh, they compete against Questron and others that do home automation. If you buy a home today, it's sort of not even an option. A lot of that automation comes with it. Nice uptrend. It's nice to buy this close to the 50. It's moving up again. Um, it's pulled back from up here. Pocket pivots and kahunas, everything's green. Bible gap up on Friday. This is on my buy list, although I'm bothered by the earnings per share growth. That was the only one to make the list. Semiconductor manufacturing has been strong. The big kahuna here is applied materials. They actually had good earnings and they sold off after um, being up in the pre because of the concerns in the market. Weekly bond goes red. Earnings are out. They're good. It's sitting on the 50. This can go one way or the other. Look at the volume on Friday. I think this was the earnings day. Um, I'd like to see it move up before I get into it. Um, maybe set a high above the, the high of Friday before it sold off. Um, I think it's a quality company and they continue to beat on earnings. Similar looking chart with LAM Research. Don't know much about them. Good earnings per share growth. A relatively expensive stock. ASML at the top of its list level here. Another expensive stock. So semiconductor tech continues to look good. The next one down, application software. One of the rare times is not Microsoft popping up here. Ultimate software, you know, it makes the list because it had a big update on Friday, up 2.5% on, on, on above average volume, or average volume probably. Um, I don't buy stocks that look like that, big sell-off. I do buy stocks that look like Activision, nice, tight, lower left, upper right. I like to buy it off the 50. I had a chance here after earnings. You may have another chance at the beginning of the week. Cerner Corp, pulling back harder. I'd rather see it above the 50. I'm not interested. Take two. This has been a runaway leader. A um, little bit too extended probably to be buying here. Horton Works, smaller stock. Um, good volume, though. Doesn't make money. Wanting to break out here as well. So there's some strength. Probably the best group. And I like Cheetah Mobile. I guess I should put it up there. And why I like it? Long base. Looks like it wants to break out here. Now let me show something cleaner. Get those boxes out. And it's been here before. So I probably won't chase it because of these prior patterns. It just feels like it wants to go higher to me. Going down the list of the top 10. Number nine, integrated utilities. Not my favorite growth area. Um, these probably pay a dividend. Here's Wisconsin Energy, pays a dividend at 3.2%. You know, yeah, it's lower left, upper right. It's about the best chart you've seen today. Nextera, even better, tight, 2.6. CMS, nice, 2.8. Duke, Pulling back towards the 50, 4.1%. Detroit Edison, nice chart, paying 3.0. 
Bottom line is boring companies, boring stories, not a lot of growth, nice dividend, a nice defensive place to be as the market pulls back. And lastly, utilities. It's interesting the two that are up there are not the traditional ones. So these are, I don't know if this is an ethanol play. Let's see. Sugarcane, ethanol. So these are ethanol. This isn't your typical Western refiners. Um, you know, big day on Friday, up day, reversing Thursday's down day, up 3%, but it's still below the 200-day moving average. And I look at Calumet. Calumet had a nice breakout down here. And again, mobile breakout from a squeeze. PSAR right below it, moving out from its moving averages in two days in a row of kahunas. A lot of signs there that Calumet looked interesting. So I saw a few interesting things, although, you know, considering where the market's been, I wouldn't expect to find a lot. Now, very quickly, I might look at the two down. And as I said, there was only one group here. And that may make you also think that this market is going to pop the next couple of days. I think longer term, we still got a bigger pullback coming in September. American Barracks failing at the 200-day moving average. I think it's just going to go sideways here. It's got great support underneath at the 50. But red candle high, pocket pivot to the downside, failure at the 200. Gold core, failure at the 50. Well, gold, it's a whole lot better lower left, upper right, but a couple of down days sitting right on the 50 and the 17, certainly outperforming the others. Not any other groups made it to the top 10 to the, to the downside. I did look at some longs and shorts. So since I don't spend much time with shorts, let's look at some of my shorts that I picked and why. Now, I will say that, um, all right, from, although I picked some shorts, I'm still waiting to see what the market does before I do anything. And let's just take a look at a couple of these. A-A-O-N. Been in a nice uptrend, basically has a doji sitting on the 50-day moving average, had a big down day on Thursday with a kahuna to the downside and a pocket pivot to the downside, not much in the way of earnings growth is coming, trades at a decent PE, insurance companies like high interest rates. So Aon is not ready yet, but it's one that I think has potential and I'll be looking for a breakdown below the 50-day moving average. PetMed Express, a similar story. Selling off here, it's at an area of support, but it did have a kahuna, pocket pivots to the downside. Earnings per share, you could see. I will watch what this one does. None of these so far are I have to do on Monday. NetEase, I never understood this company and why it does so well. It does have some big earnings growth anticipated in the future. And you could see it sitting here breaking below the 200-day moving average. The weekly bongo is red. What I would hope to see and when I would get interested in this stock would be, do I break below the 200, come back and test, and then I want to buy the failure. So that's what I'm looking for to get into this, but it's on my watch list. Quest Diagnosis. Um, Looks to me like it's rolling over. It broke underneath the 50. Um, I'm not sure there's a signal here yet, but one that I'll be watching. BlackRock may be a signal. That doji here makes me think that a reversal day is very possible. But if I don't get a high close doji and I continue down, my target here is the 200-day moving average. Now, a reversal could go up to new highs, or my theme has been up to the 50-day and then fail here. So this is going to be on my watch list whether I take a trade or not. It's had a big run. It did go to a weekly bongo red this week on very big volume. T. Rowe Price, another financial uh, broker, tired to, 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 to short highs, but it's coming off the high, still above the 50, probably a little bit too aggressive for most here. Now, I'm not going out and shorting this one on Monday either, but it's on my list to watch. I don't understand what's been keeping some of these um, shopping center REITs up. 
because there are dead ones all over here in South Florida. Maybe what's going to happen is some of these REITs are going to turn into health clinics. But here's Simon Property Group, pays a 4.7 dividend. Um, it gets some pretty nice bounces to the upside, and then it sells back, back off, as you could see. It peaked a long time ago, um, sort of failed here at the moving averages. Looks like it's falling again. The time to short these was back here in the 200s. I just think this one's got a lot more to fall. It's still $150 stock. Herbalife, 50 is support. If it breaks through support, it goes down to the 200. Probably not enough room there. I'm going to be looking to buy right up here after it pulls back and then retests. And then Wayfair, one of the big movers in the consumer discretionary. I don't get this one either. Um, doesn't make money. Um, this is a pretty hard breakdown. This is a took out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days of gains or gains or small losses. And then broke below the 17 day moving average on Friday. I expect this one to come down to the 50, which is about 25% from where it's at today. So this is one that might be more imminently shortable. Now remember, you're shorting it not far off its high, so make sure you have trailing stops. And then another one that looks very shortable is Acuity Brands. Um, it fell down to the 200, tested, has fallen back below the 200. I think this one goes down further. And that's my shorts. The ones that I like to the long side, I'm going to put up my buy list and then call out some of the ones that we've seen. Control, Weibo, we've seen. Cena. I have a lot of charts that I just wanted to watch. So Cena is, um, has a lot of Weibo, apparently. Um, and you can see it's tracking up at 17-day moving average. I'd rather buy it off the 50. But the ones that I like, I track and I wait for them to sell off. Paycom. Um, nice earnings coming in, sideways move, sitting on the 50. Here's a tech stock that chart doesn't look great. I just got it, looked at these earnings up here compared to their multiple. Form factor, a little bit better looking tech stock. Go back to my list. My best performer that I own has been Kite Pharma. And again, the same problem I had with Weibo a long time ago. I rolled some calls and I paid for the calls by selling a way out of the money call against them at 125 on Kite. And lo and behold, Kite's now trading at over 125. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I, I, I just am so worried about the market. Uh, I guess we don't want to do that. I, I didn't, I, I didn't, let me just hold on once. So here's the trade I've got on Kite right now. Kite, I've been in this stock for some time. You could see I have 75 calls and I'm short 125 calls. So those calls, that spread is worth $50 minus my cost of admission. Now, you notice that um, the 125 calls and the stocks at 130 are $19 in the money. So that means if the stock was to fall for, to 111 on January 18th, I would have $111 worth on my long position. And the, the short call at 111 would be worth zero. So I actually have $14 worth of insurance in this 125 call because it's such an expensive call. Again, why is it insurance? Because that call's intrinsic value today is worth only $5.18. Since the call to buy it back would be $19, I'm just going to sit in this call and probably hope it expires and I keep my money. Um, but it gives me a lot of protection if the market sells off. Probably just confused you all more than I confused myself. I apologize for that. So again, these are some of the things that I liked. 
To be honest, I didn't go through my charts and say I'm buying this tomorrow. There's a lot here. There's a lot very dependent upon the market. Um, I just like to find some things that I can monitor. And when I say I monitor it, it goes into my trade station. I put it in my mega radar screen. Here's my buy watch. And I'm going to look for new high close dojis, new PPS buy signals. So I can tell that since this is flashing BVN, that BVN came in with a new daily PPS buy signal on Friday. It flashes until the next trading day. So if I go into the daily, here's my new buy signal that came in. So I learn a lot from these colors. And so I monitor that through the, during the day. And you can see the, the buys versus the sells being decidedly different. On that note, I think I'm going to say goodbye. Um, again, I, I would love to have um, a couple of you attend my meeting in December. I will fill up quickly. You'll have a great time. It'll be a great bargain. 400 bucks if you come to John's, 500 if you don't. Email me at hgsidoc at gmail.com. I can give you info on John's and what you'll see as well.